Masha's Tales. Listen, I have to leave you now, my darling toy friends. I'll be back by lunchtime. While I'm out, please don't misbehave, be nice to each other, and don't open the doors for strangers. Then nothing very scary will happen to you, and you won't end up in bad situation. Like the seven young kids from a fairy tale. I'll tell you their scary story. The Wolf and the Seven Young Kids. Once upon a time, Big Bad Wolf was living next to the seven young kids. The kids listened to their mother, and the wolf listened to no one. That's why he grew to be an angry, ill-mannered brute. So then one day, the mother of the kitties went to a store to buy some milk. No, not milk. Well, anyway, she had to go to the store to buy something. Maybe it was cabbage. Before going to the store, Mother Goat told her seven young kids, stay inside and be quiet, and don't open the door for anyone, even if they say it's the police, or that it's the maintenance guy. You can open the door only if you hear the following song. Little kitties, listen to me, sweetie. Open the door and be speedy. No, no, that's wrong. Here's the right one. Listen, sweeties, little kitties, I don't ask anymore. Then you open the door. Mother is back with some milk in her sack. She went to get some cabbage. You need to sing the song about cabbage. Listen, sweeties, little kitties, I don't ask anymore. Then you open the door. Mother is back with cabbage in her sack. There, Big Bad Wolf listened at the door and heard this song. Big Bad Wolf was a real baddie. It's really not nice to listen at the door. So as soon as Mother Goat left, Big Bad Wolf ran up and started to pound the door and he sang. Listen, sweetest, little cuties, I don't ask any more than you open the door. Mother is back with cabbage in her sack. He pretended to be their mother, but his voice roared like a motor. So then the seven young kids spoke up and told Big Bad Wolf, Go away! You're not our mother! Our mother left to get some cabbage! And they didn't open the door. Big Bad Wolf really wanted to gobble up the seven young kids. And this is what he came up with. He went to the blacksmith and asked him to make his voice really high, as high as the voice of Mother Goat. So the blacksmith took out a huge sledgehammer, and then he used that sledgehammer to make Big Bad Wolf a voice that was really high and whiny. So now Big Bad Wolf could bleat as well as a goat. So he ran up again to the house with the seven young kids and started singing. Listen, sweeties, little kitties, I don't ask anymore, then you open the door. Mother's back with some milk. No, with cabbage in her sack. The silly seven young kids got so happy they started screaming, Mommy, Mommy came back! And then they opened the door. Only the seventh little kid, the smallest one of all, felt that something was not right, and he hid in the oven. Big Bad Wolf ran into the house and gobbled up all the six little kids one by one, and he didn't even have a problem swallowing them. And the entire time, he kept looking around and searching for the seventh little kid, but he couldn't see him anywhere. Then he heard someone sneezing in the oven. Ah, he screamed, that's where you hid from me. Just you wait a second. I will get you too. Big Bad Wolf's voice was very high and very scary, and he was shaking with rage, his teeth shattering away. But he still couldn't reach the little kid. That's when Big Bad Wolf decided to start huffing and puffing to break down the oven. He huffed and puffed and only got dirt to come out of the oven. He huffed and puffed again and the wind made noise in the chimney. Then Big Bad Wolf ran out of the house. He ran in and huffed and puffed hard. In fact, he huffed and puffed so hard that he got all red.
big bad wolf was huffing and puffing, but the oven felt nothing. It was kind of like an elephant bitten by a small mosquito. He couldn't huff and puff it away. The oven was made of bricks. Then Big Bad Wolf thought, I'll get to the tiny kid through the chimney. And he started climbing up to the roof. It wasn't easy to climb up the roof with a full belly. He fell down twice. His knees were scraped, his fur covered with burrs. But he still crawled up there. Well, he got up there all right, but he couldn't get in. His belly full of the young kids got in his way. Then he got all the young kids out of his belly, put them down on the roof and said, don't make any noise and if you don't behave, I'll come back and eat you. And then he thought, I'll get to the littlest kid, eat him and come back up and re-gobble them all up again. Big Bad Wolf was crawling down the chimney, barely making it, and he got all dirty from soot. Then he heard someone down there trying to light a match. It was Mother Goat. She'd come back home and started to heat the oven to cook the cabbage. While Big Bad Wolf was going through the chimney, she had time to come back with the cabbage to sing the proper song to get her young kids down from the roof and to tell the littlest kid he shouldn't have gone into the oven. Then Mother Goat started the fire. It burnt the tail of Big Bad Wolf. And he started screaming, What are you doing to me? It hurts! He barely made it out of the chimney and ran into the forest to nurse his wounded tail. Mother Goat was surprised because she couldn't understand how Big Bad Wolf had ended up in her oven. Then the seven young kids told her the whole story. And that's the story of what happened to them. Oops, I forgot all about the time. Now I'll be late, so if you want to eat cabbage again, don't open the door to dangerous strangers. Tell me, my dear toy friends, how could you eat these sand pies? Do you even know who made them? No, you don't. So I'm going to tell you a fairy tale. Once upon a time, there was a girl, little Lena, who had a brother, little Ivan. Magic swan geese. Their parents went away to the market to buy some treats. The kids didn't listen to what their parents had told them. They went into the forest and got lost. The forest was dark and scary. And guess what they saw? A huge oven! It was full of pies. They kept falling out. Little Lena and little Ivan couldn't believe their eyes. And the oven told them oh so scarily. Come here, little children, and try my tasty pie. Little Ivan got so happy. But his sister, little Lena, whispered to him, don't eat those pies. Who knows what she puts in them. Little Ivan didn't want to hear it. He ran over and ate all those pies. And then he started whining, get some water, I'm thirsty. Little Lena said, I told you not to eat them, didn't I? And on top of that, her brother got the hiccups. Then boom, out of nowhere appeared a river made of milk with banks made of fudge. So little Lena told Ivan, okay, stop your whining. Be patient, I'll go get some milk with fudge in it. But little Ivan was not a well-behaved boy. He never listened to anyone. He started rolling on the ground and screaming, I don't want to be patient. I'm thirsty, I'm gonna drink from this hoof print left by some goat. He was such a silly boy. You can't drink from dirty puddles. No way, they're full of dangerous germs. But he did it anyway. He got down on the ground with his tongue out, ready to drink from the hoof prints. And little Lena couldn't stop him because she got stuck in the fudge. So she shouted to him, don't drink from the hoof print, you'll turn into a goat. But again, her brother didn't listen and kept drinking from the hoof print. What kind of germs were swimming in the water? That I cannot tell you. But suddenly, little Ivan got all furry. Then the apple tree growing nearby told him oh so sweetly, Oh, little Ivan, would you like to try my golden apples? Little Ivan tried one. Then antlers grew on his head and little hooves on his hands and feet. And he turned into a goat, just like that. Right at that time, a flock of magic swan geese was flying over. They heard someone chewing very loudly under the apple tree. It was a little goat munching on apples. He ate them so neatly, nothing was left. 
not even cores. The magic swine geese were so surprised they decided to take Little Goat to the old witch. They flew down, grabbed him, and headed to the old witch's hut that stood on chicken legs. When the old witch laid eyes on him, she liked Little Goat so much because he was so cute and so nice and oh so fat that the old witch decided to gobble Little Goat up. The old witch preheated her oven and started singing a little song. We had a farm little goat and a fire. To eat little goat was her greatest desire. Frightened, little goat bleated so loudly they heard him all over the forest. The fire is burning high and hot. The water's boiling in the pot. Each knife has a sharp and shiny blade. Is no one coming to my aid? And he ran very fast to the place where he last saw his sister, trying to get out of the fudge. The old witch saw that little goat had run away and sent her magic swan geese after little goat to bring him back. Little Lena was just getting out of the fudge. She picked up her brother, but she didn't know where to hide. Feeling lost, she sat down on the ground and started crying. Then the oven turned red with shame of having fed Ivan all those pies. And he hit the poor kids inside of her. The magic swan geese flew over and didn't see them. For the longest time, little Lena couldn't find the way out of the forest. But luckily, goats have a great sense of smell, and little goat Ivan smelled his way home. When they got home, their parents had already come back from the market. Then little Ivan was taken to all kinds of doctors and given all sorts of shots. Finally, he turned back to a human kid again. So remember, you'd better not eat any strange food in any strange places. And don't drink water unless it's boiled or bottled. You might accidentally turn into a goat, and the doctors will not help you. Oh, how I love to go visit Baird his home. I'll take you with me one day. But for now, let me tell you a very scary fairy tale about guests. Once upon a time, there was a girl, and her name was Red Riding Hood. Red Riding Hood. She used to wear the riding hood at some point, but now she just wore a red hat in the winter and even in the summer. One day, her mother asked her to go visit her sickly grandmother and take her some tasty goodies. So the girl took her basket with the meat pies and went on her way. She was walking along the path in the forest and the meat pies were smelling so good that the girl said to herself, I'll just sit nearby and I'll eat one pie. Just then, someone or something rolled by her and then boom, and right into the tree. Guess who it was? It was Gingerbread Head. He sat there shaking his head. Well, he was shaking it all over because it was all gingy hat. No legs, no arms. Red Riding Hood picked him up and Gingerbread Head said, just like a human, please don't eat me, little girl, and I will sing you a song. Why would anyone want to eat you? You've been rolling over dirty roads in the forest. I'd better take you to my grandmother. Maybe she'll have some use for you. Red Riding Hood dusted Gingerbread Head off and put him in the basket. Big Bad Wolf, who was hiding in the bushes nearby, heard everything. He decided to eat all of them, Hoodie, Granny, and even Dirty Chinchy. Grandmother was at home in bed feeling sickly. She was very surprised when someone knocked on her door. Who's there? asked Grandmother. It's your granddaughter, Red Riding Hood. I've come to visit you, Grandmother, roared Big Bad Wolf. Oh, my poor granddaughter is probably also sick. Her voice is usually so sweet, but now it's so hoarse. That's what Grandmother saw, and then she said, just pull the cord by the door, dear girl, and then the door will open. That's what the wolf did. The door opened, and what happened next was terrible. Big Bad Wolf gobbled up Grandmother all at once and spit out her glasses and bonnet. Big Bad Wolf licked his lips and got ready for Red Riding Hood. He pretended to be her sickly grandmother, got in her bed, covered himself with a blanket, put on her bonnet, stuck her glasses on his nose, and then heard the knock on the door. Who's there? asked Big Bad Wolf. 
It's your granddaughter, Red Riding Hood. I've come to visit you. Just pull the cord by the door and the door will open, said Big Bad Wolf Grandmother. The girl came in and put the basket with gingerbread head on the floor. When she saw her grandmother, she couldn't believe her eyes. The old lady looked really sickening. Her face had gotten all dark and was covered with funny fur. Red Riding Hood sat down on the little chair and said, Grandmother dear, what happened to you? What big hands you have. The better to hug you with by adorable little girl, Big Bad Wolf smiled very wide. Grandmother dear, what big teeth you have. The better to eat you with, roared Big Bad Wolf and swallowed Red Riding Hood. Gingerbread Head got really scared and screamed very loudly. He jumped up from the basket and Big Bad Wolf caught him like a ball and gobbled him up too. Big Bad Wolf was lying in bed crying and not moving. He ate a bunch of people in a pastry. It's no wonder he had such a back stomach ache. His belly swelled up like a balloon. It got very big and round, then boom, it burst. Everyone jumped out, Hoodie, Granny, and of course, Gingy. Grandmother and granddaughter were jumping up and down with joy, and Gingerbread Head rolled up to the window, jumped up on it, and ran away. He was rolling down the trail in the forest and met Sly Fox. Gingerbread Head sang his usual song to Sly Fox, but Fox told him, I am so old, I can't hear you well. If you come and sit on my snout, I'll hear what you're talking about. Gingerbread Head jumped on Sly Fox's snout and sang. The fox opened her mouth. Boom, she ate him. That's a lesson for Gingerbread Head. You are eaten before, weren't you? Why are you jumping on the snout of some fox you don't know? It's a lesson for Red Riding Hood. You can't tell strangers you meet in the forest where you are going. But the main thing is, you must visit your relatives often. If you see a wolf, you will know that's not your grandmother. Well, 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 you're sitting inside. You don't even know that winter's here. So much snow. Maybe you guys don't even know anything about Father Frost. Okay, here's a fairy tale. Once upon a time, there was a woman who was very mean. Father Frost. And she had two daughters. One was her own, and the other was not her own. A stepdaughter. The woman was very, very sweet to her own daughter and gave her fruits and candies to eat, but her daughter was never happy with anything. The pretzels were not soft enough, the candy was not sweet enough, and her dolls were not pretty enough. The stepdaughter was the total opposite, always sweet and happy, and she was always doing all the work around the house, but still her stepmother never liked her. And then one day she took her, drove her into the forest, and left her there. The girl was standing by the pine tree all alone, shivering from the cold. Suddenly, she saw the old witch fly over her in her mortar and land next to her. Then Father Frost jumped out from behind the pine tree. Are you back to your old tricks again? But the old witch told him, You know I don't eat frozen girls. Look at her, she is turning into an icicle. And besides, I'm sick with a sore throat. You made everything so frosty that even the chicken legs of my heart were frozen to the ground. I tell it to turn to me, but it can't. Oh, okay, fly away and fast. Go! Tomorrow the weather will be warmer with sunny skies. He said it all funny like he was on TV. Well, you know when they say the weather forecast? Anyway, the old witch got back into her mortar and went flying home to her hut. Then Father Frost came over to the girl and asked her in a very strange manner. Are you feeling warm, my dear girl? I'm warm, thank you, Father Frost, she told him. Father Frost saw that the girl was polite and easygoing, so he decided to take her to live with him. He brought her to his ice palace and said, Beats my feather blanket, so feathers fly and there is snow on earth. 
If you clean the palace, the sun will appear in the sky. And if you finish all your chores, then I will award you. No, forward you. No, record you. I forgot what it was that he said. Phew, I got it, reward you. And the girl was doing everything so well that Father Frost couldn't be happier with her work. And he decided to give her a word. I mean, a reward. So he brought her to a clearing in the forest where the 12 months were gathered around a fire. They all gave her presents. The spring month gave her a huge basket of flowers. The summer month gave her berries and mushrooms. The autumn month gave her a sack of potatoes and some other stuff they gather in the fall. Oh, that's right, leaves. And Father Frost, together with the winter month, gave her three white horses, a sleigh, a Christmas tree, and a whole wardrobe of pretty new clothes. The girl came back home, healthy and all so rich. When the stepmother saw everything, she started asking the girl, where did you get all this stuff? The stepdaughter was kind. She set the sack of potatoes down in the corner and then spilled the beans. So this meanie packed up her daughter and then took her into the forest. She was sitting under the pine tree, whining and eating her pretzel. She made such a mess with the crumbs. Leave me alone! Then Father Frost jumped up from behind the pine tree and asked her, Are you feeling warm, my dear girl? You are silly and old. Don't you see that I'm cold? Get me my presents, quick. Father Frost sat on the snow, and then he asked her again, Are you feeling warm, my dear girl? The girl jumped to her feet angrily. What are you trying to do? Freeze me, get me what I earned. Father Frost got up from the snow and waved his staff around, turning her into a snow girl. So she had to stand there till spring, or maybe even summer. And all the while, the kind girl was celebrating Christmas and giving presents to everyone. Great, huh? So remember this, my dear friends. Only those children who are kind and not lazy can get real presents that are nice and useful, too. And if you decide to be really mean and lazy, too, you will never get any presents. Some people think that decorating a Christmas tree for the holidays is a piece of cake. Not so, my dear friends. If decorating is not going the way it should, do you know what can happen? I'll tell you about it. The Wolf and the Fox In a village far, far away, there was a man, a local fisherman, and his wife. And then in the forest nearby lived a very sly wolf who was always sneaking over and stealing fish from the fishermen. When it was Christmas time, the men decorated the Christmas tree, but he didn't feel like just sitting around waiting for Christmas to come. So he said to his wife, I'm going fishing, dear. The fox overheard that the fisherman was going fishing. So this very sly fox ran out of the forest on the road and slid down and pretended to be absolutely not alive. When the man saw the fox, he said, that's good, my wife can use the fur for her coat. The man threw the fox into the sleigh, and together they drove up the man's favorite spot. The fisherman sat on the ice by the opening and started fishing up there. He was sitting there for a long time, and even started to doze off. He wasn't having any luck catching fish. But the impatient fox couldn't wait, and she sat up and started to watch from the sleigh on the sly. Suddenly, someone came up and screamed behind the fox's back. What do you think you're doing? This startled the fox, who almost died of fright and grabbed her chest. But it was only the wolf. Have you gone mad, wolf? You can't go threatening people, I mean foxes, like that. Why are you screaming? Don't you see we're fishing here? The first fish is for me. Then the second one is for me, said the wolf, jumping up and down with joy. No, no, no. The second fish is also for me. And the third one, the fisherman, is mine. You go find yourself a fisherman and make him fish for you. The wolf got really sad. Where can I find myself a fisherman? And especially at Christmas time. Then catch fish for yourself, whispered the fox. 
But I don't know how to fish, said the wolf. Why do you come to me with your problems? What's there to know? Throw your tail into the water and sing the fish a happy song. So they swim over. So the wolf left empty-handed. He found an opening, threw his tail down into it, and then sang. The Christmas tree grew and the pond it grew all tall and green. The fish were celebrating Christmas in the water, just like the humans. They even had a cake. But what they didn't have was a Christmas tree. Then they saw the wolf's tail grow bigger in the water and started to look like a Christmas tree. Only it was gray and upside down and on the ceiling. So the fish started decorating the gray Christmas tree. The wolf felt something sticking to his tail under the water, so he became happy and sang even louder. We decorate the Christmas tree and start to celebrate. And the fish became happy too and started dancing around their decorated Christmas tail. It's time to take the catch out. The wolf decided to pull his tail out. He pulled once, nothing happened. He pulled again, but the tail wouldn't budge. That's when the wolf started to panic. Someone help me! My tail is all fished out. I can't pull it out. You know what really happened to the poor wolf's tail? While the wolf was singing, the water froze solid. Then his tail got stuck in the ice. The fox heard the wolf screaming and thought, did he really catch the fish? Now he will eat it all and leave nothing to me. So she forgot about the fisherman and ran to the wolf. Together, they tried to pull the tail out of the water, but they couldn't do it. Okay, fox, said the wolf. Go get the fisherman. You see we're stuck. We need help. The fisherman grabbed the fox. The fox grabbed the wolf. The wolf grabbed his tail, but they couldn't pull it out. The fisherman called his wife. His wife called the dog. The dog called the cat. The cat called the mouse. All together, they pulled and pulled with all their might, and the tail came out of the water. Of course, there were no fish on the tip, just a bunch of Christmas decorations. And that moment, the fireworks started. That's what I'm telling you. During the holidays, you must decorate the Christmas tree properly. It's more important than tasty cakes and sweet candies. Good children always share everything with others and do it the right way. I like to do my share of, oh, sharing. I know sharing is caring, but we're not talking about me here, so I'd better tell you a fairy tale. There was a farmer living in a village. The tops and the roots. And nearby was the forest with all sorts of creatures living in it, including the bear. One day, the bear saw the farmer ride his cart over to a field, and when he got there, he jumped out and started digging something up with a shovel. The bear wanted to find out what was going on, but he approached the farmer and he asked him, Hey, farmer, what are you doing here? Well, Bear, I need to plow the field, plant the seeds, harvest the crops, and then eat what I reap. The bear became very happy that there would be something to eat. Then he asked the farmer a favor. Hey, farmer, please be kind and give me some of the crops you harvest. The farmer scratched the back of his head and said, Fine, when my crop grow, I will give you some. Tell me what part of the plant you will take, Bear. The tops are the roots. Why would I want to eat a bunch of roots anyway? Ooh, they're so dirty. So the bear told the farmer, of course, I will take the tops. Fine, said the farmer. We have a deal. I will give you the top, but you have to earn your meal. So here's the plow. Let's go and work the fields. That's the last thing the bear expected, that he'd be asked to plow the field like a horse. But the bear had no choice. He worked and huffed and puffed with the farmer hurrying him from behind the plow. Come on, my little pony, run faster! Anyway, they plowed the fields, planted the seeds, and then boom, they got lots and lots of turnips. The bear picked all the turnips and took them to the farmer's house, where he threw them into a heap. The poor bear was so tired he could barely stand. Then the farmer came over and started to divide up the crop. 
He took all the turnips for himself and told the bear, these are my roots. He gave the bear all the green tops that were not tasty at all and said, all right, here are your tops. Bon appetit, bear. The bear tasted them and said, ew, this tastes horrible. These tops are not edible, farmer. Why did you give them to me? The farmer looked at the bear and pretended to be surprised. But you asked for the tops, didn't you? The bear looked back at the farmer, speechless. He just stood there with his jaw dropped, and you could hear his stomach making hungry noises. The poor bear, he was really hungry. So he walked up to the farmer and asked, Can you spare me some turnips, please? Fine, said the farmer to the bear. I'll give you some turnips. But first, you have to plant 10 rose bushes, sort three big beds of beans, wash all the dirty dishes, clean the whole house, do all the laundry, and what else? Oh yeah, I will go to sleep and you will stand by my bed with this. Chase the flies away, and if they wake me up, I'll throw you out and you will not get any turnips. The poor bear sighed, put on an apron, and started doing all the chores around the house. And the farmer scolded him from time to time. What's wrong with you, you clumsy bear? I can't sleep with you stomping your feet. Can't you be quiet? Finally, the farmer went to sleep. He was probably dreaming of gobbling up all the turnips. And the bear was standing next to the bed, waving his paws to chase the flies away. But one fly that was very fat and very green landed right on the farmer's nose and started crawling up and down. The farmer wiggled his nose like he was about to sneeze, so the bear got really scared. Oh no, he will wake up now! He will wake up! So he raised the fly swatcher and hit the fly with all his might. The bear was trying to hit the fly, but he hit the farmer right on the nose. The farmer jumped up, holding his nose and screaming, My nose! That's when the bear completely lost it. He turned, ran outside, fell over the bags of turnips, grabbed the bags and ran off with them into the forest. And the farmer was left holding no bag, just his own nose. Let me tell you why. It's because people who are selfish and greedy can see no further than the end of their nose. Be nice and share. I'm looking at myself in the mirror. Wow, I'm so beautiful. But not everyone is so lucky. Remember, beauty is only skin deep, and that means that the true beauty comes from within. The fairy tale I'm about to tell you is all about that. Once upon a time in a far, far away land. Frog princess. There was a palace, and in that palace lived a king, and that king had three sons. The king and his three sons played all sorts of games together, like tag and hide and seek. Then his sons grew up, and well, they got bored, so they decided to get married. The king had to figure out how to find three brides for his three sons. Finally, he had a great idea. The king takes the princess out into the open field and hands each one of them a bow and arrow. Shoot away, he tells them. The sons don't want to disobey their dad, so they shoot arrows in different directions. And then the king tells them, follow your arrow. Now this is important. Wherever your arrow landed is where you will find a buried treasure. I mean, not a buried treasure, a blushing bride, of course. The two oldest brothers find two ordinary brides. But when the younger brother, whose name is Prince Ivan, shoots the arrow, it keeps flying and flying and almost hits a bunny. The bunny gets scared and starts running and steps on a chicken. The chicken gets so upset with her feathers all ruffled that she lays an egg. But it's no ordinary egg. It's made of pure gold. The egg starts rolling and rolls over the mouse's tail. The mouse tries to run away. She swipes his tail and the egg falls and breaks. And guess what is in the egg? A frog! Prince Ivan sees the frog and can't believe his eyes. Impossible! How can a boy marry a frog? Then the prince starts crying. But the frog tells him, Don't cry, my prince, chiming. I will lay another golden egg for you. Oh no, 
I mean, the frog tells him, Don't cry, my Prince Charming. If you marry me, I will be a very good wife for you. Prince Ivan sighs, but he really has no choice. There's nothing he can do. So he brings the frog home. And she starts living at the palace, like a pet, you know, like a turtle or a guinea pig. Prince Ivan takes good care of her. He catches flies for her. And the frog sings to him, Crow, 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 crow. I'm going to have to cut this story short because I don't have all day and night. So the king announces the three weddings. The eldest son will marry the daughter of a nobleman, the middle son will marry the daughter of a wealthy man, and the youngest son will marry a frog. The king also orders each of the three brides to prepare all sorts of delicious treats for the big wedding feast. Prince Ivan becomes really sad and the frog asks him, Why are you so sad, my darling? Well, how could I not be sad? You obviously don't know how to cook or bake. I have to make treats for myself. But the frog says to him, Don't be sad, my darling. Tomorrow is another day. So please go to sleep and don't worry. I will figure out something. When Prince Ivan wakes up in the morning, he sees a three-tiered cake on the table with a groom made of chocolate and a bride made of caramel. This makes Prince Ivan so happy that he's ready to kiss the frog. But she tells him, oh, no, no, no. I'm not kissing you before the wedding. You'd better take this cake and hurry over to the palace. I'll be right over. Everyone is already gathered at the palace. When they see the cake, they want to gobble it all up. And then all of a sudden, there's a huff and there's a puff. Everyone gets scared and looks at Prince Ivan. Prince, Prince Ivan also gets scared. He looks out the window and says, Oh, it's just my frog riding over in her pumpkin carriage. Then everyone calms down and starts to force all the brides and grooms to kiss. That's what they do at the wedding. They kiss and eat cake. So Prince Ivan kisses his frog and she turns into such a beautiful princess that everyone just stands there with their jaws on the floor. And the moral is this. You need to take good care of all the pets that live in your home. Take really good care of them. This will make your pets feel so wonderful and happy that it could turn out to be the beginning of a really beautiful friendship. You know, my dear little toy friends, it's almost Christmas. Time to get presents and have lots of fun. But remember, firecrackers are not all they're cracked up to be. If you set them off the wrong way, that's a very bad thing can happen. Just listen to this tale. The Snow Maiden. There was an old man who lived with his old lady by the snowfield. Their kids moved to the city and they took all of the grandchildren with them. They would visit their grandparents only in the summertime. And in the wintertime, the old man and the old lady missed their grandkids terribly. They would sit by the window all day long and sadly watch the neighbor's grandkids having fun next door. One day, the old man had an idea. He slapped his forehead and said, Listen, my dear wife, I have an idea. Why don't we make ourselves a granddaughter out of the snow? The old man's idea made the old lady very happy. They ran outside and started to make a granddaughter out of snow. They made a big snowball and got really tired. It's a good thing that the kids playing outside in the snow helped them out. They put arms and legs on the snowball, then placed the head on the top. The old man made the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. Finally, the old lady put on the ears and the snow girl turned out to be so adorable, just like a little doll. Suddenly, the doll blinked her eyes and came to life. The old man and the old lady became very happy and they called the girl Snow Maiden. The Snow Maiden was growing very fast and by the time spring rolled around, the girl was a little grown up. Well, she may have looked like a grown up, but she was really still a kid at heart. 
She was always being naughty like a little child. She broke the wall clock and ripped her best dress. The old man had to fix the clock and the old lady to mend the dress. The time was flying by and soon spring had arrived, just like in a fairy tale. The grass is green, the sun is bright, spring is here, brought by birds in flight. But the snow maiden was very sad because the old man and the old lady were afraid to let her go outside. What if she melted? And after the spring came the summer. Everyone was swimming and sunbathing. But the snow maiden was still sitting by the window. The old man and the old lady were worried about her. And they wrote to their kids every day, asking them to visit with their grandkids. Because the snow maiden was really sad all by herself. The sun was shining brighter and brighter every day. So the old couple told the snow maiden to stay away from the window. And when it got really hot inside, they decided it was best to start putting her in the refrigerator during the day. Now, what kind of life is that for a poor kid? To sit in the refrigerator all day long and not be able to get out. Finally, they received a telegram from the city. Vacation! We're coming to visit you! The old man and the old lady jumped up and down as if they were not old and told the snow man, you only have to suffer a little while longer. Just sit in the refrigerator until we get back. We'll go pick up the grandchildren at the train station and we'll get some ice cream along the way. And then they left. Evening came. The snow maiden decided to get out of the refrigerator so she could look out the window and see if they were coming back. The neighbor's kids were playing outside, dancing around the fire, and then they started jumping over the fire. The snow maiden really wanted to join the kids and play and jump with them. She forgot all the warnings and ran outside. Then she decided to surprise everyone. So she went back inside and got the fireworks. She ran over the fire and jumped over it. And then, well, guess what? Of course, the snow maiden turned into a little white cloud. The old man and the old lady came back from the train station with the grandkids and saw the sad little cloud hanging above their house. And then they heard the voice, children, don't play with fire. And please don't cry, grandparents. I'll be coming back to visit you every winter in the form of snow, so you will not feel lonely. So did you understand everything about the danger of playing with fire and fireworks? Well, then Merry Christmas. Why did you have to make such a big mess in here? I have to clean everything up again. I work all day long and get no rest. Like, we little have Rochesca. Oh, hang on. Do you know who she is? Well, let me tell you. Once upon a time, there was wee little Havrocheska. Wee little Havrocheska. She would wake up every morning at sunrise and start doing the household chores. The cleaning, the washing, the ironing. Because her evil stepmother made her do it all. And stepmother's own daughters would just lay by the fire all day long and eat whatever their hearts desired. We little Havrocheska would sweep the floors, bring in the firewood for the stove, and then take the spotted cow out for the walk in the field so the spotted cow could graze on the grass. And we little Havrocheska would have nothing to graze on at all. She'd never get any food, even though she worked as hard as she could. The evil stepmother made we little Havrocheska sort three bags of wool, spin it, and weave it into cloth. The spotty cow took pity on wee little Havrocheska, so she chewed on the grass quickly and said, Listen, all you have to do is climb into one of my ears and come out of the other and boom, your work will be done for you. And guess what? It all happened, just like the spotty cow said it would. Oh, how angry the evil stepmother was. The next day, she came up with an even more difficult task. Take this little piece of cloth right here and make me a fancy dress out of it and have it ready for tonight. And make new dresses for my daughters too. We little Havrocheska looked at the tiny piece of cloth and grew really sad. The evil stepmother kept making it worse. Actually, can you make seven dresses out of it? 
I will if I have to, said wee little Heifer Cheska. Then the evil stepmother sent her two daughters to spy on wee little Heifer Cheska to find out who was helping her. The day was hot, so the daughters basked in the sun, lying on the grass. Then they shut their eyes and dozed off, and wee little Heifer Cheska sang them a lullaby. But then another disaster happened. The evil stepmother couldn't wait until the evening and went to spy on wee little Haver Cheska herself. And of course, she found out all about the spotted cow helping wee little Haver Cheska. Oh, how angry the evil stepmother was, she said. Take this spotted cow out into the woods at once and feed her to the wolves. Wee little Haver Cheska started to cry, but she could do nothing. She took her favorite spotted cow into the woods to be fed to the wolves. We little Haver Cheska and the spotted cow walked through the woods for a very long time, but they couldn't find any wolves. But they did find a pretty palace, and it was completely empty. There were cobwebs in every corner, trash on the floor, and dirty dishes on the tables. We little Haver Cheska tied the spotted cow to the door and started to clean up. And by the time she was finished cleaning up, she had gotten so tired that she lay down for a short nap and fell into a deep sleep. In the meantime, seven little gnomes returned home. All seven of them were knights in shining armor. And then the leader walked in, Prince Charming. Prince Charming asked, who let the cow in here? We have no idea, said the gnomes in shining armor. Prince Charming saw the clean floors and asked, and who vacuumed our whole palace? We have no idea, said the gnomes in shining armor. And who finally scrubbed my plate clean? We have no idea. Then Prince Charming saw wee little Haver Cheska and asked, who is this sleeping beauty? And the gnomes in shining armor answered, she's the one who finally scrubbed your plate clean. She is the one who vacuumed the whole palace, and she is the one who let the cow in. Prince Charming looked very surprised and said, I'll have to reward her then. I have to kiss her. Well, obviously, not the cow, but Sleeping Beauty, of course. Prince Charming kissed wee little Haver Cheska. She immediately started to stir in the bed and woke up. She took one look at Prince Charming, and it was love at first sight. Prince Charming and Sleeping Beauty got married and lived happily ever after. And that's what I'm telling you. If you aren't afraid of working hard and cleaning the house you live in, then you too will live happily ever after like Sleeping Beauty. Why you're looking at me like that? Oh yes, I can see it in your eyes. You are judging me like a book by the coveralls. But even an ugly duckling can have a very beautiful soul. And now I will tell you a fairy tale about that. Cinderella. Once upon a time, there was a girl who lived in the kingdom of far, far away. She really wanted to go to the ball at the palace. The problem was that she never had the time to have the time off because her evil stepmother made her do all the chores around the house. All work and no play makes us dull kids. And it's all because of these horrible housework. Cinderella did all the laundry. She washed all the pots and pans. And every day she cleaned the fireplace by taking out the ashes. By the way, that's what Cinderella means, little ashes. In the meantime, the king had decided to throw another ball at the palace. And not just any ball. He invited everyone. He said there would be an all-you-can-eat buffet of cookie candies and ice cream, and that there would be dancing all night long. Cinderella became very happy, but then she became very sad. That's because she only had one dress to wear, and it was very dirty. So she had no dress to wear to the fancy ball of the royal palace. And then suddenly, the good witch showed up and said, I'm your godmother and I will help you. I'm going to turn your old tattered house dress into a 
beautiful ball gown, the most fashionable one of the season. But there's one thing you must remember. When the great tower clock at the palace strikes midnight, you must leave out once because your beautiful ball gown will turn back into a house dress. Cinderella was so happy as she checked out her reflection in the frying pan. Then came the evil stepmother. Why do you think you're going all dressed up? We have a whole bunch of nuts in the house that need to be cracked, so get to work right now. That's when Cinderella grew really, really sad. To crack that many nuts, you can ruin and break all your teeth doing that. How can you smile at the ball if you have no teeth? Then the good witch showed up again and gave Cinderella something that looked like a wooden Pinocchio with a nose this long and a mouth that was this wide and the teeth of a hippopotamus. And who could this weird nut be? asked Cinderella. He is not a weird nut, he is a nutcracker, replied the good witch. Look how well he can crack the nuts, crack, crack. It's all done. Cinderella was able to crack all the nuts right away. And she liked the nutcracker so much that she decided to take him with her to the ball. Cinderella was walking down the road when suddenly she saw the king. Oh, your majesty, said Cinderella, why are you so sad? The king sighed heavily and told her, how could I not be sad? I had a ball at the palace, but then the rats showed up and threw me out. Just then the nutcracker stood up and said in a very human voice, don't you cry, your majesty, I will come to your rescue. He started to play his nose like an elephant playing a trombone. And he played such good music that the king started to dance along to it. As soon as the rats heard the sounds of the trombone, all their willpower simply disappeared. And the king took the broom and swept them out of the palace. Everyone was so happy that Cinderella gave the nutcracker a big kiss right on his long nose. Suddenly, sparkles began to appear everywhere, and the nutcracker started to transform into the prince. And when his transformation was over, he said, up until now, I was under a spell. And now, my dear Cinderella, I am so happy that I would like to offer you my hand, my heart, and also these pretty glass slippers. Just then, the tower clock at the palace began to strike midnight. Cinderella got scared that the prince would stop loving her when he saw her in her old house dress. But the prince didn't care about that at all because his love for Cinderella was real. That's what I keep telling you. You may judge someone by their coveralls at first, but you fall in love because of their great inner qualities. No, my little toy friends, I can't play with you right now. I'm protecting the vegetable garden from all the pests. Okay, never mind. I wouldn't want you to get bored. So let me tell you a fairy tale. Jack and the Beanstalk. There was a poor widow who lived in a village and she had a son named Jack. The widow and her son spent all day long digging in their vegetable garden. Whatever grew in that vegetable garden, that was what they ate. Then the time came for Jack to get married. There was as many maids in the village as there were carrots in the patches. Only all of them turned Jack down. It's no wonder they refused to marry him. Who would have wanted a groom like that? His pants were torn and had patches. His shoes had holes in the soles and his hat was as flat as a pancake. No one would marry him. No one would even go out with poor Jack. The widow knew he needed nicer clothes, but there was no money. So she thought about it. She thought very hard and very long. And then she said, Jack, my dear boy, if you want to get married, you need to look presentable. I've thought long and hard about this, and there's nothing left to do but to sell our spotted cow. With the money you get, you can buy yourself a new suit. So Jack put a leash on the cow and headed to the market. But the road was long and tiring. He was halfway to the market when he got tired and lay down under a tree to rest. 
Just when he started to doze off, he felt something poking at his side. He opened his eyes and saw an old man. Jack was very surprised, and the old man told him, My boy, let me buy this spotted cow of yours, and in exchange for your cow, I'll give you a nice little bean. To tell you the truth, Jack really didn't want to walk for miles and miles to the marketplace to sell his spotted cow. So, without further ado, he agreed to this deal. Jack and the old man shook hands. The old man got the cow, Jack got the bean, and pleased with himself, he headed for home. When the widow saw her son without the cow and without a suit, she got very, very scared. She thought he'd been robbed by the highwayman, but Jack told her, Don't you worry, mother. Just look what I got in exchange for your old spotted cow. I got a brand new little bean, and I have never seen a nicer shade of green. The widow just threw her hands in the air and said, Oh, what a simpleton you are, my son. Then she grabbed the bean and threw it out the window. Jack was really surprised. Why did she get so upset? He yawned and quickly went to sleep. When Jack woke up in the morning and looked outside his window, he couldn't believe his eyes. Overnight, the bean had grown up to a humongous, enormous bean tree. The bean tree was so big and tall that its top reached all the way to the clouds high up in the sky. Jack could hear a song coming down from the clouds. He was curious to know who could be up there singing the song, so Jack started to climb up the bean tree. He fell down once, he fell down twice. Should he give it another try? Why bother? Hey, you! Up there! shouted Jack. Can you tell me how to climb this bean tree? For some reason, I kept falling and falling. There was no answer for a while, and then a strange-looking rope was thrown down to him from above. Jack looked closely and saw this rope resembled a girl's braid. Jack was so happy, he gave the braid a good yank, and a beautiful princess fell down and landed right next to him. As it turned out, it was really her braid. The princess straightened out her crown, curtsied, and said, I probably have bruises all over my body because I slept on all those beans. Thank you, my good friend, for bringing me down off the tree. I am so grateful. I am ready to be your bride. That's how it came to be that Jack got married, became a king, and got half a kingdom too. That's what I'm telling you. Maybe I will grow something very interesting in my vegetable patch too, just like Jack. But I have to make sure no pests get into my beautiful garden. So I'll say goodbye now. I have to go stand guard. Please eat, my dear little toy friends. Even though you are not the newest of all my toys, you are my favorite ones. I'll tell you a good fairy tale now. The Swineherd. In a kingdom far, far away lived this one princess who was very fussy. More than anything in the world, the princess loved mechanical toys, especially those that were very intricately made. In her palace, she had a mechanical nightingale, a jack-in-the-box, and an artificial rose that looked very realistic. In the neighboring kingdom, there lived a prince who was very kind and who really loved animals. This prince loved cats, dogs, horses, and even little piglets. The kingdom where the prince lived was not a very big one, but there was plenty of room for everyone, like a real zoo. One day, the prince took his pigs out into the meadow and saw the fussy princess with her ladies-in-waiting playing with the mechanical nightingale. Oh my, what a beautiful princess, thought the prince. I really should get her a nice present. The prince chose the pudgiest and pinkest piglet of all of them, and he sent it to the princess. He also sent her a letter with the piglet offering the princess his hand and heart. Oh my, what a lovely little piglet, the princess screamed. 
looked so pudgy and pink. It must have cost a fortune. Just listen to the sound it's making. It snorts almost like a real piglet. Ew, said the ladies in waiting. That's because it is a real pig. What? It is not a toy, said the princess, and blinked her eyes, looking hurt. This prince can take his pig along with his hand and his heart and stay far away from my palace. How dare you treat me, a princess, like a pig? The prince, of course, was hurt. He locked himself up in the workshop of his kingdom and started to tinker with something. And about a week or so later, the princess was playing in the meadow, scaring her ladies and waiting with her jack-in-the-box. And suddenly, she heard some music. It was the prince, dressed up as a swineherd, sitting on a tree stump. He was holding a wonderful pot. All around it were little bells, and on top was a lid made of gold. Ding dong, the little bells kept ringing. Oh, you dear Augustin, Augustin, Augustin. Oh my, what is this lovely thing? The princess asked him. This here is a magic pot. I'll show you how it works. Little pot, make food, the prince said. And right away, porridge started to appear in the pot. It smelled so good and looked so tasty that all the pigs from all over the kingdom came running over in the meadow. The princess tasted the porridge and tasted some more. Yummy, yummy, and then she started to fuss. I want this pot, I want this pot. Buy me this magic pot right away. So the ladies in waiting asked the prince one heard, how much do you want for this pot? It's very expensive. You can't afford it, said the prince. How dare you talk like that, you silly swineherd. Tell me right now how much it is, or we will shoo all your little piglets away. I'll take 100 flicks on the princess's forehead in exchange for this pot. You impudent swineherd, cried the ladies in waiting. But there was nothing they could do, so the princess had to suffer. The princess returned to her palace, put the magic pot on the table, rubbed her forehead, and said, Little pot, make food! The little pot started cooking porridge, and then pigs from all over the kingdom started coming to the palace. They were snorting and trying to get in, and the porridge from the pot just kept spreading and spreading. Because if you wanted to turn it off, you had to say, little pot, don't make food. But the prince was the only one who knew this. So the princess and her ladies-in-waiting had to eat this porridge with the pig until the prince swineherd finally took pity on the fussy princess and forgave her. That's what I'm saying! Even the newest, most expensive toys in the world can't transform a pig into a decent human being. Today, I'm not going to tell you guys a story. No, I'll do much better. I'll paint it. A long time ago, there was somebody with hands and legs and a round body. Nothing weird but his beard. It's so strange, I really have no clue why I painted my beard blue. I mean, not mine, of course, but this man's beard. Bluebeard. One fine morning, a man by the name of Bluebeard was walking in the forest. He was singing a song he'd written just a few minutes before. ta da ta da ta da da ta da ta da ta da ta hmm thought Bluebeard. It really is time. Time for me to eat something. And so Bluebeard walked along thinking about how he'd already eaten breakfast and how lunch was far from being cooked. Suddenly, Bluebeard reached a clearing in the forest. In the clearing stood a small house. I'll paint it for you right now. There were sunflowers all around the house and there were carrots painted on the window shutters. If I am understanding this correctly, thought Bluebeard, these carrots mean this house belongs to the rabbit. And the rabbit is not a bad host at all. 
and the good host is always happy to invite his guests to lunch. Bluebeard wasted no time. He went straight to the door and knocked. Hey, hey, knock, knock, is anyone home? Knock, knock, open the door. No one answered. Maybe everyone in there was asleep. Bluebeard knocked on the door again. And again. Bluebeard knocked on the door with his fist. He kicked the door with his feet. Finally, the window shutters opened. In the window appeared a very pretty girl whose eyes were as blue as the sky. For some reason, I also painted her hair blue. I don't know why I did that. Stop knocking on my door, said the girl. You better come in and have some cocoa. Bluebeard got so excited when he saw the food that he ran right inside, sat down, and started eating. The blue-haired girl was really surprised when she saw this. How is it possible, she thought, to eat a whole cake in one go and swallow it without even chewing it? Or stick your fingers in the dish of jam as if that wasn't bad enough and then lick your fingers one by one. Ew, you have such bad manners, said the girl. Uh-huh, mumbled Bluebeard. And then reaching for another piece of cake, she overturned the cup of cocoa. A brown spot started to appear on the white linen tablecloth, and it slowly took the shape of a horse. Then Bluebeard used his fingers to draw a pretty tail for this horse. The girl with the blue hair did not appreciate this kind of artistic freedom taking, and she said through tears, You're behaving like a naughty little boy. You have to be punished right now. I have to lock you up in the dark basement. The house that the girl lived in had many rooms, and you could go into any room except for the dark basement, that is. Well, I'm in deep trouble. That's what Bluebeard thought as he sat in the dark basement. Looks like I will have to stay here forever and be hungry too. He looked around the basement for some food and suddenly he saw a stove with a burning fire. Hanging above the fire was a pot and there was something quite tasty cooking inside it. Bluebeard tried to put his hand under the lid, but as it turned out, the oven, the fire, and the pot were all painted on an old canvas. This old canvas was hanging over a secret door. Surprised, Bluebeard decided to pull the door handle. The secret door was open, and Bluebeard saw that this closet was shock full of tasty treasures. He rubbed his eyes in disbelief. As Bluebeard happily gobbled up a sandwich with peanut butter and jam and honey, he thought about what had happened and said, if not for that picture, I would have lost my poor beard. No, I mean my poor head. That's what I'm telling you. When you're feeling like all is lost, a true artistic masterpiece can help lift up your spirit. Listen up, my dear toy friends. Today I'm going to tell you a wonderful fairy tale. A tale about a peasant man by the name of Amelia. Amelia was married to a peasant woman by the Pike's wish, who was very lazy and not so smart and bad tempered. One day, as the wife was laying on the bed above the stove, she said to Amelia, You stayed home all day long and did nothing. All you did was cook dinner, wash the laundry, and scrub the floors. I'm tired of seeing you here all the time. Be a good husband, would you? Go down to the river and fetch some water. I've been sweating so much lying above the hot stove. I'm so thirsty. Amelia took a pail and went over to the river. He thought to himself, maybe I will catch some fish while I'm out there. My wife will be happy and won't scream at me. I'll try to catch a nice catfish or a tasty carp. Amelia threw the water pail into the river once, and then he threw it again, and all the while saying, I wish, I wish I could catch a fish. Big or small, I'll take it all. But no fish was biting. 
Amelia didn't give up, and he decided to check and see if this river had any fish to be caught. Maybe not. Amelia took off his mittens and put his hands in the water, and suddenly he got a bite. Well, he was bitten by something, and that something was a pike. He took it off of his fingers, and then the pike said to him in a human voice, Amelia, please let me go. You see, I'm not your ordinary pike. I'm actually a goldfish, and I can grant you three wishes. Amelia got really scared because he had never heard of a talking fish before, so he took the pike and threw her back into the river. Who knows what might happen? Then the pike jumped out and looked out from the river. It was so scary. The pike looked at Amelia from the water and said, she just said the magic spell that goes like this, by the pike's wish and by my command, make a wish and it will come true. Amelia got even more scared and didn't know what to do, so he started running home as fast as he could. He ran inside, his poor heart was pounding, he could barely breathe. His wife started screaming at him from the stove, so where is my water? Amelia told his wife what happened in the river and she laughed at him. Who do you think I am to believe these tall tales? You are such a silly Billy. Amelia got really upset that his wife did not believe him. That's when he shouted, Hey, you, listen to what I demand. By Pike's wish and by my command, Pails, come home now all by yourselves. The wife couldn't believe her eyes when the Pails, full of water, came running home. Oh my, oh my, she said, looking very surprised. Does it mean, does it mean that I can do anything I want from now on? I can even go shopping and buy some new clothes without leaving my warm oven bed? Why didn't you say so before? You are good for nothing. Amelia sighed it deeply and said, I guess I have another wish. By the pike's wish and by my command, oven bed, take my wife to the stores. The oven started to spout smoke from its chimney, made some weird noises like a train, and then drove Amelia's wife away. Not sure how long she was out, but finally, she came back from her shopping trip. She was all dressed up. Amelia did not even recognize her at first. Standing before him was a real aristocratic lady admiring herself in a mirror. I am so beautiful, I want everybody to look at me and admire me, to know that I am the sovereign of the sea. What does she mean by that? Amelia asked himself. If she's the sovereign of the sea, do I too have to wish to be a fish? But I don't want that. But the wife was very demanding. She was screaming and stomping her feet on the ground. Transform me right now, I tell you. There was nothing Amelia could do but do it. Fine, this is my last wish. By the pike's wish and by my command. Oh, just like in her wish, she turned into a fish. From then on, she lived in an aquarium at Amelia's house. That's what I'm telling you before you start saying your wishes out loud. Think about the consequences your wishes might have for you and also for your loved ones.